Are you tired of feeling stuck in your current job and yearning for a more fulfilling career that gives you the freedom that you crave? Well, the truth is your work can directly impact the quality of life you experience both professionally and personally. So whether you are seeking financial stability, a sense of purpose, or lifestyle freedom, creating work you love can lead to a more fulfilling future. So in this video, we're going to explore how you can design your work to align with the life that you want to have and build a business that honors your own personal definition of success and freedom. Okay, let's dive in. I'm Lydia Lee. I'm the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. For many years now, I've been helping hundreds of budding and growing small business owners to intentionally create their businesses from their genius zones so that they can experience true freedom in their life and work. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button so that you're the first to know when I film videos just like this every single month. First, a little bit about my own story. My leap from the nine to five to becoming an independent business owner wasn't something that happened overnight. It was actually instigated by a health scare and a physical burnout that I experienced in my career in 2012. Now, I wish I had a more positive story to share in terms of like, maybe I woke up uh, and had a high level consciousness awareness that I was in the wrong career, but it really actually took my physical body breaking down for me to have a bit of a wake up call. Now, I kind of call it my breakdown to breakthrough moment, but in that you know, reflection of what wasn't working in my life, it was really apparent to me what was contributing to my misery was the type of environment I was doing my work in and also the long hours, like 60 to 70 hours a week, which is what I was working before, that contributed to not having a life, being very, very depressed and unfulfilled, right, in my career. Now, even though I loved the idea of having security, I was in a six-figure job, I was about to be offered partnership in the company I was working for, I didn't like what I had to give up to climb that corporate ladder. And I often describe this moment as I climbed the corporate ladder went up that mountain and the view just wasn't what I was expecting. So it wasn't the work that made me feel unfulfilled, but it was also these other things that I really valued in my life, like time with my friends, freedom to travel, going, you know, being able to have more autonomy over my time. All of those things were not happening, even though that beautiful paycheck was coming through. So it was a reality for me to think about what did I want to have in that ingredients of success for me, that was more than just a paycheck, more than just money, right? So that breakdown moment forced me to reflect a bit on what was that true definition of success that I really wanted. And I really want you today, if you're thinking of that, you know, you're contemplating leaving a job or starting a business, leaving a career for many years, I think this is a really foundational part to start because until you understand what is your own personal definition of success, happiness, and personal freedom? It's going to be hard to understand where to move into, okay? So I want you to start thinking a little bit about what are your ingredients of what you need in your personal life and in your work life to feel like you're aligned with your values and to feel that you can be happy showing up for both parts of your life, life and work. Finding your own metrics of success is such an important step to start with because it acts like an internal GPS for when you're looking for options, possibilities, and opportunities about where to take the leap towards. If you were to quit your job, you really understand what are the grounded values and things that you really require, right, for you to feel successful. So what is your own personal definition of success? And what's the quality of life you really want to have as you do good work in the world? What makes you feel successful? That's beyond just the income part and the money part. That's not just a conventional way of what other people have told you is the definition of success. So coming from you know, a family that prioritized getting a good job, really just like staying in line and doing the right thing to get to my retirement plan. You know, I came from an immigrant family, right, that prioritized safety, for example. So the narrative for me to be successful is really about getting in line, right, and doing the right thing and climbing that ladder and doing everything possible, right, to feel secure. And as I grew up and became an adult, right, in my own right, 
my own definitions were different from what my parents instilled upon me. And there were still lots of values of what I still take on from what I've learned from them. But me as a brand new person, someone that's not attached to old philosophies that may not right, be mine right, to hold on to anymore, I had to really get clear right, about how do I want to live my life where I can wake up every morning, look in the mirror and be proud of what I'm doing right? And what I'm taking action on that really leads me to a life experience that I really want to have. So the choices that I make today in my lifestyle prioritizes, yes, a bit of security for sure as well, but it also prioritizes things like spaciousness, flexibility, and energy to do things and have time to do the things that I enjoy that's beyond work as well, right? And a lifestyle that I enjoy requires both safety and also freedom to explore, right? So I wanna share with you some of my own definitions of what I call the meaningful metrics of success for me to spark some ideas for you as you think about what those metrics of success are for you as well. So having spaciousness and time, as I said, was a, is a huge part of how I designed my business to have more of that, and that equates to success for me. Exploring ideas that matter, this really matters to my body of work because I'm a creative person that doesn't want to just stay with one thing forever. I like to explore and evolve my body of work and I need to have a job, a business uh, focus, right? Or a way of designing that business that allows me to continuously be coming up with new ideas and flexing my creative muscle. Being myself and in my strengths is really important to me because I hate doing stuff I don't want to do. And I hate doing things that are not in my genius zone because that feels hard. And I no longer want to be living out this narrative that being successful requires blood, sweat, and tears. You know, I want to believe that my natural strengths, my natural tendencies, my personality, my most sort of, you know, um, not hard stuff to do is enough, right? To be able to create that success for myself. Giving value with my work is really important because I care about the impact that I make with my work. So making sure that the business idea, the focus, the purpose of my work has to be an important part of a belief that I have about the world, that my work is a ripple effect to causing an impact in a movement or a topic or a cause that I truly believe in. Building a like-minded community, both personally and professionally, is a metric of success that I measure myself on every year of how many people are really challenging me to become the person I want to become. And am I learning from the right people that value the same things that I value as well? Doing deep work and making an impact, right? If you are someone that needs to be proud of what you're doing, you're motivated when you know that the thing you do really changes lives, that needs to be part of your ingredients of your success, right? Working with clients I like, oh my gosh, that is a huge metric of success. When I think about every year when I review my business, if I think about my clients where I have this feeling where I show up for every call, every presentation, or you know any paid interaction with them where I go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm being paid to do this. I enjoy their company. I love helping them. We're aligned in philosophies and values so that I am the right person to help them. That brings me a lot of joy. And knowing that I have aligned soulmate clients, that's a metric of success I measure my business into, right? And lastly, growing my personal leadership. I need to be in a role that allows me to consistently be growing who I am, what I'm capable to do, my emotional intelligence, and constantly be upskilling. So the way I might design my business year includes learning, includes investing into things and mentors and courses, right, and education that helps me to level up so that my work can be an extension right, of where I'm evolving as well, and me being able to share more and earn more, right, from my improvement of my own leadership skills. So now that you've also seen some of my own ingredients of how I measure the metrics of my own success, did it instigate any ideas for you in terms of your own metrics of success? I would love for you to share what are those ingredients, what are the things that you need in your life and in personally and in your work life, that's going to make you feel successful. That's beyond the conventional way of what others may have told you what success feels like. Once you've defined your personal metrics of success and the ingredients that 
are really needed for you to have a fulfilling and deeply satisfying work life, that's going to inform you on how to create the work that you should be doing to get you to the life that you want to have. The first step to start is to identify the work that really lights you up, right? And build a creative way to deliver that work that's in tune, in alignment with the strengths you have, how you want to show up for work, the right people to be working with, and the structure of how you deliver that work to other people. When you love the work you do, life can feel really good as well, right? So work is such an important part of our happiness because most of us will be working. And a lot of us look at work as a meaningful contribution for a bigger purpose in life. And it makes us feel really good about ourselves as well when we can do really, really good work and people respect and accept our work in ways that are really rewarding for them and for us in our career. So designing how you wanna work has to be in alignment with not only your strengths and your natural tendencies of your best work, right? Or your genius zone, but it also has to align with the lifestyle you want to have, how you want to work every single week, what times of the day is, is your best, you know, time zone of working and be able to structure other things that matter to you, like your hobbies, your family, other extracurricular activities that really matter to having a holistically happy life, right? So when I work with clients to design a business that they love, we really dig into how they naturally operate. I work with about 80% introverts, for example, and introverts will work in a very different way than extroverts and ambiverts, right? So building a model of a business and a way of working in that model um, that aligns with your personality type, that's going to help guarantee that you're going to joyfully be showing up for work more happily, right? And if you're not quite sure what, what type of business you should be starting based on your personality type, I have created a whole tool for you that's going to help you define the model of work you should be working based on your strengths and your superpowers. And that's my, what's, what business should I start quiz? Uh, that would be a great place to start if you haven't done that quiz yet. I'll put the uh, link in the comments, uh, sorry, on the descriptor and also in the cards above so that you can go ahead, go ahead and take that quiz after this video and really find out what's your ideal business based on your personality type. The second part I look at is I start to look at how we can design uh, the schedule, right, for you. Um, what is the, the type of week, right, that is most conducive to your working style? And when are the times of the day you should be taking breaks or having other priorities scheduled in? So we really analyze, and you should also really be analyzing, right, what other parts of your life are really important that you want to prioritize, that you can design a schedule that both have you working well and also living well, right? So here's a great example of my day-to-day -day schedule right here uh, that prioritizes right? My workouts, um, you know, social gatherings that I care about very much with my friendship groups, my learning days, right? That I usually have on a Friday. Um, and they are, this is called, you know, theme, theme day blocking and also really being mindful about what days are for what priorities in my business and also for my life. Now, one of the videos you might want to check out if you're interested in learning how to do theme days and time blocks so that you can be working on your side hustle project and also be a lot more intentional about how you spend your energy and time, go and check out my how to develop theme days um, and calendar blocks um, video that I'm going to put up in the cards as well so that you can start to use a template, right, that I showcase in that video to start designing what your ideal day-to-day -day is. Even if you're not living it out right now, it's great to have that as a great example of what you're working towards as you're building your business as well. And then lastly, thinking about work structures. Um, how do you like to work, you know, based on your personality type? Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of my clients are introverts, so they will have minimal face-to-face -face interactions because that kind of drains them a lot. So the way that they take care of their clients might be very different than like Zoom calls, right? Or um, kind of impromptu phone calls. They may do more voicemail recordings. They may do more screen casting or screen recordings so that they have time to think about what they want to say and then record a reply to a client, right? So there are many ways to use different technologies and tools to 
show up for work in the way that you are best to show up for work instead of just doing exactly how you were doing it in your old job, right? So you might want fewer phone calls. You might want to do more things behind the scenes, right? For your clients. Um, you may only be a sprinter of doing really deep work for about two to three hours a day. And then you have to do lighter loads of work because you get drained more easily, depending on, you know, again, what is your personality type? What is the way that you show up and, um, you know, do things? Your day-to-day -day schedule, how you show up for your offers and your services needs to be designed in such a way that it doesn't feel like pulling teeth to do that, right? Um, if you need support in other aspects of your business that is in your genius zone, those are also things to help, you know, think about so that you can start to outsource things that are not in your genius zone and be able to focus on your superpower focuses that actually grow your business and grow your offerings as well. Designing a business you love is so much more than just choosing a business model. There are so many components in a business like who you work with, what you offer, how you market and promote yourself, how you deal with your day-to-day -day schedule and structure that matters to your well-being and matters to your personal fulfillment with the business and the work. And it's the piece that I really dig into with every individual uh, of my, you know, in my courses, in my coaching programs to really focus on the human behind the business and how you really want to show up for this work that's going to make it a long-lasting, sustainable business that's not only profitable, but purposeful as well. So if you want to go deeper with me on how to construct a business, the foundations of a meaningful business that's going to bring you purpose and profitability, I would love for you to check out my free training called The Four Keys to Launch a Business You Love. You can find it at the link in the descriptor as well as the cards above this video or go to my website. You'll be able to see it in the Work With Me page. It's a perfect place to start and spend about 50 minutes with me where I break down these um, foundational elements of um, designing this business so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming on the steps to take to launch your business, but also you will be educated on a more easeful way, a more strengths aligned way to launch a business that you truly enjoy. So I hope that you join me there. Thank you for joining me today for this video. I hope you've learned a lot about creating work you love and why designing the work that you want to do in a business can absolutely lead to the quality of life that you could be experiencing both professionally and personally. I would love to hear from you what your biggest takeaway is from this video by commenting below and share this video with anyone that you think would benefit. And of course, subscribe to the channel to ensure that you get all the tips and advice that I offer here on this channel every single month. I will see you in the next video.